Joining me now is someone who won a Pulitzer Prize for his reporting on the Trump Organization and Donald Trump's business dealings. David Farenthold is a reporter for The Washington Post and MSNBC contributor. And I wanted to talk to you all day because when I when I saw the indictment, my first question was, what does this mean for his money? Like, what does this mean for his bank accounts, his company, his business dealings? He's the guy from The Apprentice. So from what you know about the culture inside the organization, how are they processing all of this? What's happening over there today? You know, it's a really small organization at the top. It's not, there's not that many people. And Alan Weisselberg is probably the most important. I think it, the last four years have shown you could take Donald Trump out of the Trump organization and it'll still run. I don't know if you took Alan Weisselberg out of the Trump organization, if it could c continue on. He's the guy who understands where every dollar goes, who, who, how all the complexities, all the different the web of LLCs, how it all works together. So the fact that he's indicted, he's distracted, he may not be able to do his job as much, that's an impact on the Trump organization right off the bat. I, I think they're struggling to figure out, I mean, they have a lot of problems. They have lost a lot of customers because of their politics. They lost a lot of customers because of COVID. Now, as they try to rebuild after COVID, the company's under indictment. So it's not a death blow by any means, but it's a very serious problem at a time when they already have a lot of them. So in terms of Donald Trump's finances, I mean, you've been reporting on that. Uh, you're you're the, the point person on that topic in the country. Does anything in the indictment surprise you from what you know based on your reporting? It did, actually. This was a part of the Trump organization that it's really hard to see inside unless you have a subpoena or several subpoenas. And so what we saw here was that, according to prosecutors, they were running two sets of books. It's sort of the most like classic fraud you can imagine that they had one set of books in which they counted these payments for Alan Weisselberg's car, apartment, you know, family members' tuition, where they counted those as compensation. And then they had another set of books they showed to the IRS where the compensation was absent. You know, if you're prosecutors and you run across that, but literally two sets of books, you have to be pretty happy because that's a, that's a fairly easy case to make. We didn't know that was going on. Uh, we didn't really even suspect it was going on. It's a part of the organization that I think only a few executives knew um, so, yeah, I was surprised by what we learned today. Hmm. That's so funny. I mean, yeah, Glenn, Glenn was talking about that in the, in the previous conversation. The two sets of books is straight out of a movie or even like The Wire. I mean, Stringer Bell said, do not take notes if you are involved in a criminal conspiracy. It's just like a pro tip, you know, pro tip. Don't don't write it down. Um, so let's pivot and talk about Donald Trump, the former president, personally. He says he's not worried about this investigation. He's he's just moving on with his life. But from what you've seen happen to his businesses as a result of the insurrection, um, and as you said, many people don't want to do business and the pandemic, should he be worried, big picture, in terms of how his business is going to handle the fallout from all of these things? I think he should be. I mean, honestly, I don't know the point of the Trump organization now. Donald Trump has clearly moved on to politics as the chief vocation of his life. The Trump organization is kind of a, a mishmash of, it's got a toe in a bunch of different industries. A lot of the industries it's in are hurting. Its properties are often in places where Trump supporters are not. If you remember that his hotels are aimed at like a urban, wealthy, big city demographic, people that can spend $500 on a hotel room because they want the ultimate in luxury. That's the, a bad place to be trying to sell the Trump brand right now. So I, I think that there are, the company is struggling with a lot of problems, in part because it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I've wondered, if you're Trump and politics is your game now and your family's really transitioned into politics, why do you have this company, which is struggling in so many different places? So we don't know what's going to become of the Trump organization, but I think it's struggling with the sort of its logic to exist right now. So in that organization, we all know that the kids, the three adult children of Donald Trump, those they're a major part of uh, the Trump organization and the business. What happens to them? Do they have to liquidate assets or anything because of this investigation? Do you anticipate them being affected uh, by the fact that the Trump organization has been indicted and they are obviously a major part of that company? There's no major implication, direct implications because of the indictment. There's no, you know, they're not going to be put out of business or anything. Even if they're convicted, if the Trump organization is convicted of a crime, probably the consequence will just be some fines. Uh, that said, there's a lot of collateral damage that comes out of this. You know, there's reputational damage, but also maybe harder to find vendors, to get government contracts, to get to work with your lenders. 
even liquor license can be licenses can be affected if somebody on the license is convicted. So it adds another uh, extra level of complexity. And I have to say, you talk about the Trump children, and there was a time in which they were all sort of equally involved. I don't see that now. Don Jr. is mainly involved in politics. Ivanka is mm -hmm. doing her own thing. It's mostly Eric Trump. Eric Trump is the one who's sort of managing all of this. Um, and I don't see an indication that he's legally caught up in this, that he's going to be indicted. At least they've given no sign of that so far. But now he has to run this company that's got all this dead weight on it. At the same time, and his father is sort of disengaged. His CFO has been indicted and the company's been indicted. Yeah, it's, it sounds like a less than ideal situation. Last question, and talking about the present um, and future, Donald Trump is out on the campaign trail again. Um, he yesterday went to the border, and over the weekend he held a rally in Ohio. So he's back out there. To your point, he's pivoted to his new career, which is politics. Um, who's what's your insight into how that is being funded? I know he has a PAC, but. Do we have any insight into how he is fundraising and paying for all of this, considering the fact that he ran a company that had double books? Well, he has started a new pack, which has gotten a lot of money, millions and millions of dollars, and it's relatively little overhead. I mean, I, I think it mostly sends out emails and, and it pays a few staffers. We have not seen the books for its expenses. I think we might see them by the end of July. I'm curious about that because I want to know how much money Trump's PAC has spent at Trump's properties, you know, converting, which is something he did a lot as president, converting campaign contributions into private money for himself. So we're not, we don't know all about its finances, but Trump's political operation is very well funded. He's got a ton of money and he doesn't have much to spend it on. He just flies himself around the country occasionally and pays some staff. I'm, so I don't think that is a problem. That's why I think. The Trump organization is a, pro is, a, is a business with a lot of cash flow questions and not a great reason to exist going forward. So I've always wondered why they don't just pivot to politics where there's ample money and not that very many of these same problems. Well, we'll see how this all unfolds and maybe they will pivot um, just to a political operation since clearly they, they are making the coins there. Um, well, using the coins for the campaign purposes, to be clear, to be specific about it. David Farenhold, thank you so much for being here this evening. First time on the show. It was so great to have you and help us understand uh, the implications of today's indictment. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.